<clears throat> In this video, I'd like to discuss uh, some of the more technical aspects of the uh, Quick and Dirty Railroad. This is the uh, fourth video of, uh, of this railroad and is preceded by a Quick and Dirty Railroad Part 1 and 2, a computerizing the uh, Quick and Dirty Railroad, and uh, finally this video which will look at some of the technical aspects, um, more of the electrical connections and the uh, low level uh, connections and things of that nature. To review, for those who hasn't seen the, uh, the prior uh, videos, uh, K&D is a attempt at a prototypical design uh, to try to make the uh, model as near uh, the prototype as possible. And uh, to do that I've included a uh, bi-directional um, single track main line, which is so typical of railroads today, and it has passing sidings uh, to allow trains to overtake and to pass uh, going in the other direction. There's a hidden holdover yard underneath the railroad uh, which uh, simulates distant uh, to and from locations. In other words, instead of just going around in a circle on the top of the railroad, what we do is we start from a hidden location, come up on top of the railroad, go around a series of of uh, loops and turns and uh, snake our way around and then the train disappears again and perhaps another one comes comes through in the other direction maybe stops at a siding and then you know so on and so forth uh, the idea once again is it's a different type of action uh, we also have industrial uh, sidings and classification yard for uh, for freight service a uh, passenger st uh, stations uh, for commuter and long distance service, a roundhouse and engine facilities, and uh, we could run timetable operations uh, using a computer or uh, continuous running using um, ATC, uh, automatic train control. <clears throat> and that would be uh, similar to uh, your, your typical layout today where a train just simply uh, repetitively comes around in front of you, goes uh, disappears, comes around again in front of you and disappears, and so over and over again. That would be your continuous running. Um, we employ uh, hardware, microcontroller, and uh, PC uh, laptop, actually, uh, control levels. Uh, each of those have a different level of function uh, in this whole thing. And what we're trying to do here, once again, is to maximize the functionality uh, of most model railroading into one layout. For mainline operation, which is where I'm going to focus uh, primarily today, because that's where most of the technical part of it, this is, um, we, we basically dispatch trains from a holdover yard, route them either east or west, which is uh, a typical uh, reference on a model railroad. Um, we also have, by the way, a north and a south rail. <clears throat> so, you know, if you were to look at a diagram of, of, the, of the layout in front of you, uh, right would be to the west, uh, east, left, west, up, north, down, south. Very simple. Um, east and west routing with trains, appearance of trains into the visible area, and they come up, they route around, they uh, may go to a siding, they may not go to a siding, they pass or overtake another train, and ultimately disappear into the hidden holdover yard. Here's the top track plan. Um, it's broken into blocks, eight, eight blocks on top, and then there's four underneath. Um, Block one comes out from underneath. This is a hill that goes downhill uh, to the lower level. And come up through here uh, to block one, block two, and around to block three where there's the first passing siding. And this is like right in front of the, the, uh, the audience here. Uh, there's a siding and a main. And then it's a, also a yard down here, by the way, and there's an engine terminal facility not shown over here. 
uh, around to uh, block four, uphill on block five to a bluff where it meets uh, block six, which is also a passive siding, and uh, then to seven, and here it di disappears into a tunnel uh, to simulate like it was going that way, but it doesn't it really, it goes this way, and downhill and back into the holding yard. <coughs> couple of notable features here. Each of the uh, <coughs> passing sightings has a, um, a, a hold block on the end of it so that if a train comes in and up to this point we can stop it here and, and hold it there while perhaps another train overtakes it or another one comes this way and we go around on the siding. Um, these are the primary control points uh, used by the computer to program a train. These, these are the points where you would normally stop a train. You would, for example, never stop a train uh, right here in the middle necessarily, <coughs> except under certain, certain circumstances. But to minimize the number of interfaces to the computer, we, I had to... Uh, basically cut down on the number of connections. So these are basically the control points and there's, there, there, you'll see in a minute there's two connections uh, to each of these. Here's the control panel. Um, essentially it's a picture of the layout if we were to unfold it and stretch it out this is what you would have. Uh, you would have block one starting here to three with the yard, okay, four, five uphill, six on the bluff, seven into the tunnel, and eight hidden in the, in the back. <coughs> also down here is uh, a picture of the holdover yard, which we have not looked at yet. Um, there's a, a rotary switch over here that dispatches one of six tracks, and a switch that uh, does that either manually or overrides this and does it automatically by computer. Over here is a, uh, a switch. If we're routing eastward, we have to throw this switch to accommodate. You will see later why, why that is so. On the receiving side of the yard, which is over here, um, you can select the track to route the train, train to and then up here would be uh, manually selecting those switches. Down is automatic and it ignores whatever's here. And this is also a switch that accommodates eastbound trains coming in. They have to cross over and we'll see that in a minute. So it has to set up some switches to do that. Um, each of those switches we saw on the uh, main line are basically block feed switches. In other words, they feed the power to the block. And this, this is a diagram that shows how that's done. There's two power packs. There's a what they call a westbound power pack and an eastbound power pack. And I usually leave these in um, the polarity needed to run a train that way. The, they feed into a, a bus here that feeds all the block switches and uh, you can set these block switches to the east pack or the west pack or in the middle it turns the, turns the block off and you stop the train there. Um, notably, it's, again, the north, north rail is common. This feeds to the south rail. Okay, this is typically one, one of the feeds off of this block up to the south rail of the block and the block is delineated by an insulating pin here and an insulating pin here. It, this is a device called a current detector. What it does is uh, takes a bridge rectifier and wires it so that there's a, a one and a half volt drop across the thing and that lights up a light when and if there's a train drawing current up here. So this gives you an ocu occupied indicator for each block and they were, they were on, the, on the panel. Matter of fact, let's go back and look at that. They show up as these lights uh, and uh, if there were a train there and the power were on, you would see, for example, uh, a light 
here, indicating this train is uh, occupied, occupying that uh, particular block. There's also a circuit associated with the uh, each each end of the uh, passing sidings that looks like this. This is replicated four times. Okay, here's passing siding in, in three, passing siding in six, and this is re uh, re replicated here, 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 and here. And uh, what it is, they call it an A module. Um, this thing. Uh, if you recall, the, the ends of the blocks were insulated in such a way that there's a, a hole track here. These things uh, stop a train here under certain conditions. And the conditions we'll see in a second here, but they take inputs from the switch itself, the turnout itself, which is controlled by a solenoid, and that feeds into the uh, A module, and also a hole and occupy indicator from the next blocks down. And this is done by computer. The uh, com computer has an algorithm in certain places and under what conditions it stops a train. Now notice how it's wired here. The blue wire comes into the A module and goes out right back into the, uh, um, the hold block. What it's doing is it's taking it's either connecting or disconnecting this portion or this portion of the uh, siding, in this case, to that particular hold block. So it's either connected or not connected. Likewise on the main down here uh, with the purple. Okay, so the A module basically interrupts the current from here to here. And that stops the train under certain, certain, certain circumstances. Here's what the A module looks like. It takes, okay, occupied indicator from the from the computer and the siding input right here. It's, it's basically a pair of double throw, double double pole, double throw relays wired thusly. Now we can see what happens here with the main. If, if for example, under normal conditions, nothing nothing is energized there. The power comes in from this point, goes into the relay, goes normally connected over here, normally connected here, and goes right back out again. So in effect, it's just connected, typically, as, uh, as it normally would be. <clears throat> However, at the same time, if the switch, or the, the uh, turnout over here, is uh, set in the main, condi the main line condition, uh, if you take this input here into here, it's normally open for the siding so that you don't get the current going to the whole section. Well, what will happen here is any train traveling in this direction, uh, if, if the, uh, the turnout is set for the other way, it will stop the train here. Likewise, uh, on this side, if you've got an occupied indicator, both of these things would be normally connected. It will, nor it will open that connection to both of these. Uh, so it will essentially stop any train uh, if there's a train ahead of it. Now as that train of course advances, it goes two or three blocks down depending on the logic. Uh, this will open up and allow the train to continue. And if you have two trains here, it depends on which way the turnout is set as to which train will continue. So it kind of covers everything there. Now, there's a couple other things in there that you're probably wondering about. Uh, there's a pair of resistors here that's always connected, and they are there to provide a small amount of current to go from here to there uh, so that it will show an occupied indicator on the control panel. Likewise over here. It's not enough current to run, to run the diesel, or the train rather. It's uh, just, just enough to light up a lid on the panel essentially. <coughs> or actually a bulb on the panel to show it occupied. <coughs> also, there's a diode in there, and what that diode does is it always connects 
it always allows trains to flow in this direction under all the circumstances. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, I'll tell you what. Remember we said if it's occupied downstream here, uh, it will stop the train. Well, what about the train that's pulling into here? It's going to have its tail end hanging off onto, into the next block. So, uh, if it's a passenger train, it's probably got light bulbs in the, in the cars and they're going to give it a, a, an occupied indicator and they would stop the train here. And you couldn't get, it to, couldn't get it to move. So what this does is, even though this thing is showing occupied, uh, it will allow the train to continue because of the polarity of this diode. Here's the entrance to the holdover area. Um, the train actually comes in from around the corner here, down this lead, across here, around a loop, and then comes out here, and then there's a series of switches that allows it to go to track one, two, three, four, five, or six. And um, we'll see a little bit more about that here. Here's the overall diagram. Recall that the uh, two tracks going downhill, uh, they meet up with these tracks here. And this is actually the end of block one, the end of block eight, which stops here and here with those uh, insulating pins. And um, for, let's see, for outbound, what, you're always going to come out this way, and this switch is going to send the, send the uh, train either east or west. In normal condition, it will go westbound, we'll go to block eight, which is actually on the east end of the layout, but that means it's westbound because it starts east and goes toward the west. Likewise, if you want to go uh, the other way, you would set this crossover here, the train will come out, cross over to go to block one, which is on the west end, going eastward. When trains come back, this normally has to be set uh, norm normal condition, just straight, straight through. And a westbound train coming in on block one will normally go to block nine inbound. Block nine is always inbound, one way around this way and into the yard this way. Anyway, once a, once a train gets onto block ten, and this whole thing is wired uh, in parallel, by the way, so whatever's here has to keep going, and it keeps going until it re reaches a block down here, which is another hold block similar to what we had on the siding, uh, except there's six of them now. And these are normally turned off. Uh, the train will run itself into here and stop. Once, once we're ready to dispatch a train, we either select a track uh, through that uh, rotary switch we saw on the console and then flip the, uh, the, the manual switch on, and that will energize one of these uh, whichever you got the toggle set to, and turn it on, and it goes to block 12 and then out, and then you route it via the uh, crossover, either to block 8 or block 1. Don't see. Did I miss anything here? No, I think I got it all. Here's kind of the wiring of this whole thing. There's actually a lot of things happening here, and what, what we do is um, run, run this stuff kind of like a, a parallel bus, if, you know, if you're familiar with electronics. All that means is that there's eight different, uh, eight different connections for several devices along the way. And one of the connections, of course, is the, the power feed to that whole block itself, and this is the south rail of uh, that block, comes in, it's wired to an auto route circuit, to a, a auto and a manual uh, dispatch circuit, all right, computer controlled, set of relays in here, can, can dispatch a train, a rotary switch uh, can dispatch a train, depending on if you set this switch to auto or manual. Along with that on the control panel, we have uh, an Occupy display uh, of six LEDs and they light up and tell me, the operator, uh, which of these are occupied. So if I want to dispatch a train, I have to look and see, is, is there anything on that track and go ahead and, and send it on its way. 
<coughs> the blue wiring has to do with the in incoming routing. And this sets up the switches, or the turnouts, I'm sorry, in such a way that it, uh, well, if we do it automatically with the auto route, this, there's an algorithm here that uh, it takes the, uh, it's, it's basically a priority setting. It's, it assigns the train to the first available track. So it's a priority type of thing. If there's a train on one, uh, it will send it to track two. If there's a train on one and three, it will still send it to track two because track two is the first available. Uh, and on from there. There's a, uh, trains can be incoming routed manually, again with a rotary switch, and the rotary or the auto is selected yet by another uh, toggle switch. So uh, if I needed to, for example, set up uh, a streamliner on track 4 and a local on track 2, I could do that by running them and using a manual switch. <coughs> This is a detailed diagram <coughs> of the routing uh, circuitry, and actually it's the whole uh, whole ball of wax for the uh, the holdover loop. Um, what I'm not showing here is uh, because it got very busy is the manual selection of the uh, incoming routing. Well, let's start over here. We got manual control. We got a rotary switch can select one of six um, feeds to the holdover tracks over here and essentially at the same time the holdover tracks over here are presenting uh, essentially a dead engine uh, that's not being powered so it offers a low, low resistance path to ground and will light up a lead a light emitting diode, uh, which is wired to the track supply over here. If we're in auto mode, uh, one of four relays uh, can be used to, to dispatch from tracks uh, one, two, or three, or four. Uh, I ran out of uh, connections uh, and relays to be able to do it from tracks uh, five and six, but I've got a sneaky little way of doing that, which I'll show you in a minute. Also associated with the leads, remember I said this is a bus, basically. Well, these are all the things that are connected to it. All right. We have also a relay coil, which feeds the, that track very similar to the way the leads do. If it's a dead engine here, there will be current flowing, say, through this. Uh, coil here to, through the engine to ground and it's enough to operate the relay and the switch associated with it. The relay coil by the way here is about 200 ohms uh, so that the current ends up being something like 0.06 amps and uh, it's insignificant. It's not enough to run the engine. It's uh, not enough to even heat it up. So. Uh, there should be no problem there. The LEDs are fed through a one kilo ohm resistor, and that's also that's even less current. That's one fifth of the current going through here. All right, over here we have we can follow the logic of uh, how the um, priority incoming works. <clears throat> that is, a track one is occupied. This coil will operate. This relay will operate, so it will be down here. Six volts will be routed down to the next relay and to its normally uh, open connection go to clear two, which operates the relay and switches from block one to block two. So it takes the next track. Same thing happens down here. If, if these two were operated, the current gets down to here and it operates this uh, relay which, which switches from track 2 to track 3. Alright, down here it gets a little more complicated because what we have is, a, is the incoming switch, the very first switch or turnout that we run into when we come in. And that feeds into two sets of three tracks. So 
Nope, it's, it normally goes to the left, to uh, tracks 1, 2, and 3, and we don't have to operate it there. Uh, but when we, we get down to tracks 4, 5, and 6, we do have to operate this re relay, and, or turnout, I'm sorry, uh, to get it to switch to that second block, second set of three uh, holdover tracks. So that's why you see the, this kind of wiring here. Here's that uh, setup uh, to get essentially six tracks out of four relays. What, we'll do, what I'm going to do is just, here's the normal way it's, it's done. The Arduino is connected to four different relays. Whole block one, whole block two, whole block three, and whole block four. And uh, these, this again, this is the dispatch circuit. This is the stuff in red, red wires, not the blue wires. All right, we're, we're dispatching trains now from the computer. And what we'll do here is take the whole block four and turn that into a, another relay, which is a, a three-pole double throw, and basically just switch uh, whatever is here to, the, to a second set. And we see we, we would uh, switch uh, block one to block four, block two to five, three to six. So that when it's set in the uh, operator position, we're essentially uh, dispatching from the second set of three or the first set of three. The uh, <clears throat> outgoing and ingoing switching is shown here. This is the, uh, the, the main crossover. If we're dealing with westbound trains, it's a piece of cake because all we have to do is just go straight. If we start from the, uh, from the yard out, we go up to the east end and we're westbound. Come in from the, uh, from the, uh, from the west end, all right, and we come in here and go to yard in. No switching whatsoever. It gets complicated when we have an eastbound train, however. We have to, have to do something physically, and we have to cross it over, essentially. So that says, if we're going out, all right, we take the out lead, lead here, we have to come in and operate these two switches, or turnouts, so that it routes up to the west end of the layout and goes eastbound. If we're coming in eastbound, <coughs> we come in from the, um, the uh, this should say west, Come, we come in from the uh, west end. Is it west end? No, it's east end. Sorry. Anyway, we come in this way from block eight down here, and we have to switch at this point uh, across to yard in. Now, I don't know if anybody's dealing with HO uh, in this type of area. Once you get into a loop situation, there's all kinds of polarity issues. So, uh, with, within the air, there's uh, ways of connecting, uh, um, connecting the, the, the tracks here, here, and here, so that uh, the polarities uh, check out all right. It's all even more complicated because uh, we were using two power packs, and both have floating grounds. So in certain situations, they, the voltages can actually stack up on top of each other. Instead of 12 volts, you get 24 volts and okay, like the wheels spark and things like that. The solution to that, and I should have recognized this when I built the layout, is basically a better plan here, which is to use a double crossover. And what happens here is this polarity simply gets routed through here and this one gets routed through here and then they don't get connected inside the crossover. Anyway, it's, it's built this way. I'll keep working on it and see if I can find a better solution. I wanted to show you the relay assignments of the Arduino just to, sh to, to uh, show you how fast they add up. This I have 16 relays, two sets of eight, and uh, these, these are the assignments. The whole gaps for the, uh, the uh, uh, sidings, all right, the east and west ends, 
of three east and west ends of six up on a hill, then the turnouts for three and on both ends, and the turnouts for six on both ends. The crossover entry and exit, which we just looked at in the last slide, those two sets of switches have to be operated somehow. Uh, the direction settings of the main line itself, okay, and I've got to divide it into blocks one through four, five through eight, and then the holdover exits of the holdover yard, uh, one, two, three, and four. And this is the one that I would use once again to make two blocks of three, uh, as we just discussed two slides ago. That's pretty much it uh, for the technical stuff. Um, I want to thank you for watching if you got this far. Uh, I know it's pretty heavy stuff. You may have to, if, if you're interested in any of this stuff, look at it again, stop the camera, or stop the camera and, and study the diagrams if, if you need to. Um, once again, the other videos that are available are Quick and Dirty, Parts 1 and 2, Computerizing the Quick and Dirty Railroad. This one looks at more the Arduino, uh, the upper level uh, of how the thing is um, configured on, a, on a, a, a processor level. And of course, this one uh, was just the technical details. I think that's it. I want to thank you for watching. And happy railroading.